Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Tamara the Paper and Pen Girl coming back with a video for you all. This is video number three in my uh, forgiveness series that I am doing or the study on forgiveness. And I'm glad that you are able to join um, this particular week for this study. I am doing one of these topics as well. Um, and this title of this one, it says, Forgiveness is not letting the offense reoccur again and again. And I think that's so important for us um, to understand that that is not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness does not mean to put ourselves in harm way again. It does not mean to lay down and um, let someone walk all over us. It is a totally different meaning than when um, people will say, you know, to turn the other cheek. Mm, you know, that's a totally different situation. Now, there are um, certain factors that come into not letting that reoccur again and again. And I'm going to read off a few of these to you. So under here, it says we don't have to tolerate, nor should we keep ourselves open to lack of respect or any form of abuse. When we choose to forgive people, we have to make sure that we are outlining the way that we want them to treat us beyond that point. And if we do not lay down that framework or that groundwork and make sure that there are clear consequences um, towards the treatment or the behavior, then all of this becomes very blurred or blurry, okay? And we subject ourselves to that emotional um, abuse. I wanted to go in um, because this does point out two things. Like I said, number one is a lack of respect or any form of abuse. Um, we're not going to get too deep into the word abuse today. We are going to get into something that deals with that um, as well, but we're not going to get too deep into it because we can go so deep into that because it's so broad and so wide of a topic. As I said before in, in the beginning of this study, I am going to, you know, dig a bit, but not that deep because this will take forever if we do that. Now, you can dig deeper for your personal benefit, um, but, you know, I'm just digging for what jewels or gems that I need and to take those jewels and gems so that I get a better understanding of how this thing called forgiveness works um, as well. Okay, so the first thing that I'd like to point out is um, is on the topic of abuse. And the one that I'm going towards is emotional abuse. Why? Because for us women, I know for me, one of the things, most things affect me emotionally. That's how most things affect me. Because I'm a nurturer, I'm a carer, I'm a fixer. I mean, you tell me you have a problem and I want to get that problem fixed fix for you. Uh, you let me know, how can I assist you? How can I help you? What can I do for you? And I'm going to make sure I'm on that thing. Like, how can we get this thing done and get it right for you so that you can be happy, so that you can be healthy and whole? Leave me a comment down below if you're like that. And so I think for most women, when, when we get hurt, we get hurt emotionally. And that emotional scar is just there. It's, it's, you know, takes the longest for us to heal from those things because we love deep, we hurt deep um, as well. So emotionally is something that I have to make sure that I'm dealing with is that emotional abuse. What is emotional abuse? We have to define that. We're not talking about the occasional someone uh, had a bad day and they yell at you, okay? So it says everyone has a bad day once in a while and responds with harsh or negative words. W-O-R-D-S, words. Once in a while. We all have these bad days. If you do, if you've never had a bad day, never flipped off at the kids, never flipped off at the car tour, never flipped off at the spouse, never flipped off at a friend, Lord gosh, have mercy, never flipped off at a parent and then had to beg for forgiveness. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, or get the I'm sorry slapped out of your mouth. You know, let me know if you've never had that because you're probably going to be a rare jewel for never having that. But I know that I've, you know, just, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. 
Yes. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. And so that is not what um, emotional abuse is. It says emotional abuse is an ongoing pattern of behavior designed to control, to manipulate and to subjugate. OK. And so we have to understand the difference between the two. We cannot run around saying that people are emotionally abusing us when honestly they just had a bad day. They just really had the worst day ever and you just came and tried and made it worse. Okay. And that was the, well, as they say, the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. So that's a totally different situation. This here is an ongoing pattern. It's repeated. It's a serial thing. Like we have people in our lives and we know them very well. They say it. You say the same thing every single time you do what you do. There, it, and, and you feel like, look, it doesn't make any sense that I say anything more to you because guess what? It, my words don't matter. What I'm saying to you does not matter because you continue to do the same thing over and over again. And we actually, um, sometimes we see it, but sometimes we don't can feel like you're manipulating me. You're manipulating me. Um, and especially when we have certain um, values, I want to say, people try to manipulate that side of us in order to keep us in that circle with them, okay? They try to keep us in that circle with them. Those are the kind of things that we're talking about. These are the kind of relationships that we're trying to um, get past, that we're trying to either forgive and create standards for so that other people, number one, don't follow them and start to treat us the same way. Mm -hmm. And number two, we have a standard that of expectation for ourselves and we can have something to stick to so that is different um one of the things um that c c came under a few things that came under this emotional abuse section is discounting or um if if someone c c continues to discount you um distort what you're saying and they're negating everything that you're saying that's emotional abuse if they're withholding a affection from you and emotional support and uh, withholding financial support and research resources. Those are things that's designed to control you, to manipulate you and to subjugate you. Honestly, if you're relying on someone as a breadwinner in your family, in your household, to uh, lean on for financial support. And a lot of times, of course, we do have that in, 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 um, covenant relationships, if that person tries to hold you hostage with that situation, like, okay, I'm not giving you any money for this. I'm not giving you any money for that. That's manipulation. Like you're trying to manipulate me into doing exactly what you want me to do to behave how you want me to behave, not as the person that I am. Even if it's a case where um, sometimes parents might do that with their children. Mm -hmm. And you know, not that we have to support bad behavior or bad habits from our children, but we have to be very careful with these two, which is the withholding of the financial support or resources from them and the withholding of the affection and emotional support that they need. And honestly, I tell you, I, you know, this is like an eye opening situation and, and lesson for me um, as well, because it has caused me to actually write down several questions that I have written down here um, that I want to make sure that I'm asking myself, answering, and also making sure that I'm, I'm, I'm applying to certain, to my relationships, to the relationships in my life. And it says, I need to evaluate my relationships. How am I telling the folks that I want to be treated, which is Earlier, we had said that we needed to set clear expectations, right? So that's the clear expectations. Then, do they have the capability to be to be able to treat me how I want to be treated, which is the care, uh, clear capability? Then, what is the measurement of that, okay? And what's the reward and the consequences of that? Not only in the matter of how people are treating me, but how am I treating these people? How am I treating my spouse? How am I treating my children? How am I treating my parents, my sisters, my brothers, my aunties, my uncles? You know, the people, my friends that are closest to me, evaluate the relationship. How am I treating those people? 
How do I expect them to treat me? And have I communicated those things to them? Because we have friends that, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. They speak disrespectful to you. They do things in your presence that you don't like. You still hang around with them and you're like, oh, that's how this person is. Oh, that's how that person is. We make those kind of excuses for them. The same way we change, they also have the ability to change. Um, and so we have to make sure that we're communicating those things clearly, wrong spot for this, clearly um, to others. So it's causing me to make sure that I'm evaluating how I am treating others and how others I'm allowing others to treat me as well. Um, one of the things that you can, um, you can use to, to see the effects of emotional abuse. It says the effects of emotional abuse are often debilitating. Uh, this includes depression, confusion, difficulty concentrating and making decisions, overwhelming feeling of worthlessness, hopelessness, and poor physical um, health. Really and truly, when people um, are emotionally spent, emotionally abused, and they're tired, they're worn out, they just, oh my gosh, I can't take it. I cannot do it anymore. I just, I just want to sit here. You know, it's one of those situations where it's hard and it's harsh and it's difficult for us to get to the point where we want to forgive people who have contributed to, to, to creating that feeling or those feelings inside of us. Let me know if you've ever had any of those feelings um, uh, before as well. I mean, I have, I've experienced them. I've, you know, not been alive that, that long, but I've been through enough relationships to know that there are some toxic people who are hurt. They're hurt. And because they're hurt, they inadvertently are hurting you in the relationship that you're in. Um, in one of the bigger, in one of the, the previous uh, ones, let me see. Um, and it's, I had on here, but I don't remember exactly where it is, but it says, you know, it's because they don't know. Sometimes they don't know and they don't know any better. All they know is that they hurt and they're lashing out and they're not even sure why. And sometimes they're not even sure that they're, they don't even know that they're lashing out, um, either. So we have to go into this situation wide open and understand that, um, forgiveness is realizing is going to be realizing that not everyone knows that they're doing something to us, even emotionally abusing us. We have to make sure that our eyes are wide open to it. We have to evaluate the relationship. And then we have to make sure that we are not putting ourselves in the path of it happening again and again and ag again. Our lives, it's our party. We can choose to invite and uninvite whoever we want to. And we need to protect ourselves, um, be a layer or a level of protection for ourselves um, as well. One of the things that we can use to protect ourselves is to know what a good relationship should look like. And one thing that I did print out, because a good relationship with ourselves is loving ourselves, right? Right. Because if you love, you protect. You protect what you love. And so we want to protect ourselves. And it says, um, love is patient. And this is 1 Corinthians um, 13. And it says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud, which also means arrogant. It does not dishonor others, okay? It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered it keeps no records of wrong because mm -hmm, they keep on throwing it back in your face right even though the thing happened 25 years ago they're still throwing it back in your face um love does not delight in evil but rejoice with the truth love always protects always trusts always per hopes and always perseveres so that to me was a great definition of what love is. And so I need to measure if I'm loving people by the standard and if I'm receiving love by that standard. 
one of the books I also will definitely um, suggest that you read or and or listen to the audio is The Five Love Languages. Um, that book is such a wonderful book and I'm actually going to um, retake the love language test because we uh, have different love languages that we respond to. I'm going to retake that and I'm also going to have my children take that um, because children have love languages too and so how they receive um, love and affection might be different than how you're showing them love and affection. So I would go ahead and um, have your children do that as well. You do that, your spouse do that. So this way we can prevent the feeling of, hey, affection and emotional support is being withheld from me when truly it's not being withheld from you. It's just being expressed in a different manner that you are not receiving. This is also a part of knowing ourselves. It's a part of letting folks know how to treat you. If you don't know how you receive love, if you don't know how you receive um, um, respect, how you receive respect, right? That's going to be different. It's going to be diff difficult. One of the questions that I previously asked myself, and it was something that I really had to sit and think about. I really had to sit and think about it. And I was like, wow, I couldn't even come up with an answer, a good answer off the top of my head. And I'm going to pose that question to you all. How do you want to be treated? And then apply that to how do you want your spouse to treat you? How do you want your children to treat you? How do you want your mother, your father to treat you? And and what does that look like? If you say, I want them to treat me with respect, what does that look like? I want them to treat me with love. What does that look like? I want them to treat me in a friendly manner. What does that look like? Sometimes we're like, when you ask the second question, which is what does that look like? They're like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, so... If you don't know, how do you expect the people that you're expecting that from to know? So make sure, please, that we're understanding that forgiveness is not letting the offense reoccur again. And a way to be able to prevent that is to know ourselves a little bit better, know how we want to be treated, communicate that clearly, and also um, um, communicate it clearly clearly. List the consequences and stick to the consequence, okay? Or the reward. You need to be held accountable for what you say that you will do or will not, you know, or will not take or will take or will not take. You need to be held accountable just as well as the person that you're speaking to as well. And this will help to prevent some of these kind of emotional abuses that we women really a lot of times suffer with. Um, that leads to so many debilitating uh, feelings for us. Um, as it mentioned before, depression, confusion, um, sense of worthlessness, all these things, hopelessness, poor physical health, because then we don't want to eat and then we start to stress out and then we're losing weight or we're um, um, stress eating and we're gaining weight and then we start to feel bad about ourselves and because we feel bad about ourselves we're eating some more and then we're depressed some more and it's a vicious cycle that we need to make sure that we are um, letting go of. I love at the end of the study on focus on the family there was another um, link to another video not video but um, what is that? Our blog writing, an article, that's what it is, an article, and I will go ahead and link it below uh, once the video updates and I can get on my laptop. Um, I will go ahead and link that video down there. And it might be tomorrow because I have VBS tonight to go to. It says, you were created to have emotional freedom, inner peace, and strong self-esteem. Emotional abuse has undermined God's plan for your life, your joy, and your peace. But what others have sabotaged, God can rebuild. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! 
that I love, that I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. And I think that part, just that one that says what, but what others have sabotaged, God can rebuild. I'm going to take that and put that in another planner um, that I have for the week because that just gives me so much strength and so much life right there. And so this is what I have done with this one today. And like I said, I didn't want to get too deep. I just wanted to hit some of the, you know, overall what it is, what it is not, and how can I get past it? You know, making sure I know this is what I'm the standard that I'm judging, not my, not judging, but I'm holding myself and others too as well. And, and people tend to respect you a little bit more when you hold them to a certain standard. When you just don't let them free will and nearly run amok in your life, they hold you to a different uh, standard. So I hope this study also helped someone. Please leave me any comments down below. Um, any questions you might have, I'll be more than happy to try to answer in my next video as well. Until the next one, I will see you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And remember that what others have sabotaged, God can rebuild. Bye-bye.